I have absolutely no shame in saying that one of my favorite performers in the WWE is Cesaro. In fact, going way back several years, when I would actually occasionally watch Ring of Honor, one of the few things that I enjoyed about Ring of Honor were the kings of wrestling. Chris Hero Sandwich and Claudio Castagnoli. And I said that right, damn it. You know, I've always been a fan of Claudio. And, you know, I was excited when he got signed to WWE. I was excited when I saw him get promoted to the main roster because I thought he was a guy that was big enough to be believable, yet small enough and light enough to be able to do some of the high-flying athletic type of things that the WWE seems to value and the hardcore fans seem to value. This is a guy that comes with years of reputation and name earned on the independent scene, so he has a built-in fan base already. A guy that, frankly, brings a little bit of a different style compared to anybody on the WWE roster. And one thing I've always appreciated about Cesaro is the fact that, to me, he tries to go out there every time and do something to make himself stand out. No matter how shitty of a position he's put in, no matter how many dumb things they involve him in, no matter how little the company tries to care about him, no matter how little they emphasize or push him, it doesn't seem to matter to him. He's still going to go out there and try to do something to own his time. He's going to do something to make that time matter for him and his character. Whether it's one spot in one match, whether it's a 15 or 20 plus minute main event with a John Cena, it not matter at all. It seems like Cesaro always is trying to go out there, at least in my opinion, for my money. And he's trying to go out there and get himself over. He's trying to take advantage of whatever opportunity he's given. And I applaud that and I respect that tremendously because God knows in today's WWE toxic wasteland of a creative environment, it has to be very frustrating to see how shitty it is, especially when you work on the inside. You have to know how bad it is. You've been doing it for years. I don't care what they say in public. You know, amongst themselves and privately, they know how dumb it is, how bad it is, how shitty it is, and have to have kind of almost... a. a a real defeatist type of mentality, if you will, in the sense of they think no matter what, it's not going to matter, or I'm never going to get a chance, it's never really going to get over, I'm never really going to become a star, and you have to fight against that. Now, to me, I look at a guy like Cesaro as a guy who fights against that, has fought against that, and continues to fight against that. So, you know, to me, I look at him, and I don't see a guy necessarily that you build a company around. No. I don't necessarily see a guy that is a consistent main event type of guy if your company's really good and has a deep talent roster and you know what the hell you're doing from a writing and creative standpoint and a booking standpoint. But I see a guy that could be a star. Maybe not a huge type of megastar, but I see a guy that could be a star. I really, really do. Not every star has to be a main eventer. Consequently, not every main eventer, in my opinion, especially from WWE standpoint, is a big type of megastar. And you know, with WWE, there's a place for a guy like a Cesaro, in my opinion. Not everybody needs to be huge. Not everybody needs to be tiny. Not everybody needs to have the most outgoing personality or great mic skills or incredible grab-you-by-the-nutsack type of charisma to get over. And when you look at Cesaro, it's a matter of accentuating the positives and masking or minimizing the negatives. And when you look at the positives, especially from an in-ring standpoint, there's a lot there for Cesaro. And it seems like so often, regardless of who he's working with or the match situation that he's in, the crowd gets involved in his matches, they get behind his matches, and they want to cheer for this guy. They like this guy. They feel like when they see Cesaro, they get their money's worth, which is something I don't think that most fans can say about a lot of the performers, frankly, in WWE, including many of these so-called big names or top guys. 
And I look at a Cesaro and I say, this guy should be a star. But the sad fact of the matter is, he probably never will be. Now, certainly, from a hardcore fan standpoint, he already is a star, probably a megastar. But that's a departure from the WWE reality. But he should be a star. Because he should be that serious, bare-bones, you know, no-bullshit, no-strings-attached type of ass-kicking type of guy. Not somebody like Brock Lesnar, like, fee fi full fum watch out, boys, here I come. You know, not somebody that's going to fly around and do 300 high spots, you know, like a Neville. He's not going to flop around to sell a match like a Dolph Ziggler. You know, this is a guy in Cesaro that can work different types of matches, different types of styles, can actually somewhat tell a story, and then also has the offense and athleticism to be able to really stand out and make you go, whoa, I want to see what the hell this guy is going to do. With the Cesaro swing and his uppercuts, you know, that freaking corkscrew thing he's doing over the fucking top rope. I mean, just incredible stuff. You know, and as a counterculture type of guy, he's a guy that could be a star. Like, I always look back at Bret Hart, and I always thought he could have been the biggest star of all in the Attitude Era for the WWE from, let's say, 98 to 2001, but maybe never even have touched the world title. And the reason I say that is, is because with the Austins and the Rocks and the Foley's and the Takers and the Canes, you got this guy drinking beer, this guy doing people's elbows and talking about Strudel and Jabroni Drive and all this other crap, Mick Foley and all his different characters. You've got Kane shooting fire out of everywhere. You got Taker throwing down lightning bolts. You know, but here's Bret Hart, the serious, no bullshit type of guy. He actually stands out more in that type of era because he is so different from everybody else. And a Cesaro should be that type of guy. But the problem is, in today's WWE, there frankly are a lot of guys like Cesaro in the sense of the way they're packaged and the way they're featured and what they bring to the table. We've got plenty of guys that can go in the ring to a certain degree. We have plenty of guys that have athleticism. We have plenty of guys that can impress people with their matches, that can get people involved at their matches. But they really don't bring much from a microphone standpoint. Their characters have never really been built, nurtured, developed, or you know, molded in any way, shape, or form. They can't, again, really talk on the mic. They don't really have that outgoing type of grab-you-by-the-balls type of charisma. The problem is for a guy like Cesaro, as good as he is and as talented as he is, he kind of just is another face in the crowd in WWE. And this is where they kind of fall into that pattern of too many light guys being featured the same type of way. That's the bigger crime is that they feature everybody the same. After all of this time, we still really don't know what makes Cesaro tick. We really don't understand who he's supposed to be as a character. We don't know what the hell he's supposed to be about. And the WWE doesn't seem to be bothered to give a fuck enough to sit there and try to tell you any reasons why you should give a fuck about him. Sure, you can sit there and be naively fooled into thinking that Cesaro's due for some big monster push because he's been working with Cena lately, but that's more so just the fact of he lost his uh, tag partner for over a year in Tyson Kidd due to a neck injury, so Cesaro had nothing to do. And they want to make sure they have John Cena look as good as possible so they know Cesaro can go out there and make Cena look good. That's what it's about. It's not about Cesaro. It's about John Cena. And that's the problem with me to WWE's product, especially when we talk about the Cena monster. It's always about him, and everybody else is just about making this guy look good. Imagine how much better this guy would look if these other guys also looked good. And it wasn't just about this one guy. It was about this guy and this guy and this guy. You know, how about you put a Cesaro in a situation where he's not just being thrown to the wolves and Cena trying to make him look good, but you're trying to make Cesaro look good. You're trying to build him up into a threat. You're having him as somebody that could potentially credibly beat a guy like John Cena. You know, you look at a Cesaro now, you'd be absolutely stunned to the point where you'd almost cry bullshit if a Cesaro ever did beat a Cena, let's say, for the U.S. title. But then you look at the WWE, and you, it's still clear to see, to, at least to me, that people like Vince and Kevin Dunn don't get it. They don't believe in him. They don't understand him. They sit there and say he doesn't dance, he doesn't rap, he doesn't sing, he doesn't you know, wow you with uh, his ability to recite boring-ass, lame-ass, repetitive, scripted promos like other guys, you know, what the hell purpose do you have for him? 
We're a sports entertainment company, not a wrestling company. Well, I got news for the WWE. You're not even a sports entertainment company. You're most certainly not an entertainment company. The way you write your televisions now, you frankly, regardless of the bullshit that anybody wants to say about the past, which is probably all true, you're more of a professional wrestling company than you have ever been, and not a particularly good one at that. You can't even be bothered to write interesting wrestling storylines, let alone sports entertainment storylines. Your scripted promos are bad. Your production is lackluster from a WWE standard in terms of the effort they put into it. Uh, the producing of the show in terms of how it's pieced together is very repetitive and very stale. You know, All of these characters are booked in the same type of manner where it's random match, random match, random match. There's no reason to get invested in them. There's no reason to care about what the hell they're doing. There's no reason to care about their match that they happen to have at the pay-per-view. You know, I look at a guy like Cesaro again, and I see a guy that should be a star. Not a megastar, perhaps, but a guy that people would want to come and pay money for in order to see him wrestle in the ring. Well, you've got this guy's a character, and this guy's larger in life, and this guy flips all over the place. Here's Cesaro. He's a guy that you can draw some money with, and I firmly believe in that. But the sad thing is, is the WWE can't draw money with him, and in my opinion, won't draw money with him, because they've gone away from even being a sports entertainment company. They've become a lame-ass, mediocre-ass professional wrestling company. Where even if a Cesaro wrestles different than others and he looks different than others, he feels the exact same. And again, if you continue to put these guys in the same type of positions, in the same type of patterns, doing the same type of things, where well, we never get invested in their characters, you never develop their characters, you never even bother to tell us who they are, and you most certainly don't give them any type of interesting business or anything interesting at all revolving around them, then they're just limited one-trick ponies. And unfortunately, that's what Cesaro is. He's a one-trick pony because the WWE makes him this way. And with some other people, I'll sit there and say sometimes, you know, no matter what situation you're put in, if you're good enough, the cream will rise to the top and you can overcome it. In Cesaro's defense, I think he's done as good of a job as anybody of doing the best he can to persevere and overcome and make the best out of the continuously crappy situations that he's put into. How nice would it be just one time if you gave Cesaro three to six months where he was actually the focus and he actually mattered? You weren't sticking him with Paul Heyman so that way you could give him a heater in Paul Heyman after he wins the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal and everybody wants to fucking cheer the guy after he split off from fucking Swagger and Coulter. We're going to align him with Heyman so that way we can keep Heyman on TV and we can transfer his heat over Cesaro and then not fucking do anything at all with Cesaro whatsoever. You know, you even look at a Cesaro at this point in time, I'm sorry. But if you're going to tell me that you would actually buy that a CM Punk was a legit threat to a Brock Lesnar or a Daniel Bryan for crying out loud or even a Seth Rollins as a legit contender, based off of the physicality with which he works and how naturally strong this guy is, to me a Cesaro is a much more credible threat than any of them other guys. It's a shame the WWE doesn't book him in a way where he could actually be a credible threat to a guy like a Brock Lesnar. If you're going to have Brock Lesnar around for the next few years, you should be building up guys to face him. Because if that's going to be your big money drawing ticket, then you might as well get the most out of that investment. You know, a guy like Cesaro is a guy that you could have have a big four pay-per-view match with the Brock Lesnar. They most certainly can't do that now. I don't care how good his matches are on TV because the care for him only goes so deep. The connection with him only goes so deep. It's a similar thing with Dolph Ziggler. It's a similar thing with so many other guys. And it's a shame because, again, Cesaro could be a star and, frankly, in my opinion, should already be a star in the WWE. And, again, he's just another guy that's never going to get over to the level that he should if something doesn't dramatically change and he's just going to get stuck in mid-card hell for the next several years and frustrate us all the time.